No doubt, evil is pervasive in the world, and sometimes history presents us with not just evil people, but ruthless, brutal individuals who are in a position of leadership and control. The people on this list are among the most controversial in our world's history. These are the five most violent world leaders ever. Number five, Vlad the Impaler. Known for his panache for blood, Dracula has been the subject of countless movies, books, stories, and more. First mentioned in author Bram Stoker's novel in 1897, this fictional figure is actually based on a terrifying prince who also loved the sight of blood. Vlad III, and later known as Vlad the Impaler, was the prince of Wallachia. Born in 1431 in Transylvania, he was the son of Vlad Dracul, then ruler of Wallachia. When he was 11, Vlad III was held as a political prisoner before eventually being released years later. By then, his hatred for the Ottoman Empire surged, and his later actions soon solidified his image as one of the most brutal leaders that ever existed. The Impaler was known for his gruesome and ferocious tactics. During his reign, he sought to create a balance of power between Hungary and the Ottomans, while at the same time keeping his kingdom independent. First, he knew he had to consolidate power in his own principality, so Vlad decided to invite all the boyars to a banquet. He then had his guests stabbed as they drank and dined, and ordered their twitching bodies to be impaled on poles. Vlad would use a rounded pole to minimize damage to the victim's internal organs, thereby prolonging their agony. People would often live for hours or even days at a time, while suffering in full display for everyone to see. By 1459, he had impaled countless Saxon merchants because they were once allies with the boyars. Soon, Ottoman envoys paid a visit to Vlad and in his presence refused to take off their hats citing religious devotion. Vlad, then in retaliation, had their hats nailed to their skulls. In 1462, he was in a full-scale war with the Ottomans, and as the enemy advanced with three times the numbers of his own army, he had to resort to underhanded and brutal tactics to gain ground. Vlad took refuge in the Romanian forest and sent soldiers to poison the wells, burn crops, and ordered diseased men to mingle with the advancing army in hopes of infecting them. In one of his more successful campaigns, he writes to an ally, I have killed peasants, men and women, old and young who lived where the Danube flows into the sea. We killed 23,884 Turks, without counting those whom we burned in homes or the Turks whose heads were cut off by our soldiers. Thus, your highness, you must know that I have broken the peace. Overall, it's estimated that between 80,000 to 100,000 people fell victim to the Impaler's brutal tactics and at least 20,000 of those were killed and impaled and left just outside the city. Ultimately, however, Vlad lost the war against the Ottomans. He was later captured and imprisoned, although for how long and where, most historians can't seem to agree. He managed to reclaim the Wallachian throne after his younger brother Radu died in 1475. His reign was short-lived, though, and he was killed the following year while marching into battle. He was captured and then beheaded, with his head placed on display in Constantinople as a trophy. Number 4. Genghis Khan Born as Temujin in 1162, he would later be known as the ferocious Genghis Khan, leader of one of the most successful armies and empires that ever existed. Khan was born in violent times. His father kidnapped his mother and forced her into marriage. Before turning 10, his dad was killed and poisoned by his own clan, and Khan, along with his mother and siblings, were left abandoned. Soon after this, Khan killed his older half-brother to become the head of the household. In 1178, he married his first wife, Bort, and they had four sons and several daughters. However, Bort was kidnapped and Khan staged a daring rescue of her, which ultimately gained him respect. Soon, he began making alliances and gaining followers. 
What's unique about Genghis Khan's rule is that he went against custom and installed competent allies instead of family in crucial military positions. He killed the leaders of enemy tribes, but assimilated the remaining members of the clan into his own. He also ordered looting to be put off until they had complete victory. Despite having an animist religion, Khan's followers and army were made up of Christians, Buddhists, and Muslims. By 1205, he had managed to defeat all of his enemies and unite all Mongols. He then set his sights on expanding his territory, heading towards the kingdoms located in northwestern China. His army was feared in most part because of their unforgiving nature. While they would always present the enemy with a chance to surrender before anything, Khan was also known to be ruthless to those who opposed him or outright said no. In one instance, a city not only refused Khan's peace offering, but also ransacked the caravan that he had sent in hopes of establishing a trade route with the area. Khan was so upset by this that he wiped out the entire city, including the entire civilian population, and poured molten silver down the eyes and throat of their leader. In another instance, the Mongols got brutally creative while following their ancient rule of never spilling noble blood. While invading through parts of Russia, they captured several nobles and since they weren't allowed to stab them or kill them in a way that would spill their blood, they instead laid their enemies underneath several wooden platforms and then they stood on top of them, ultimately crushing them to death. Unbelievably, it's said that Genghis Khan's reign came at the cost of 40 million lives. Historians believe that during the rise and reign of the Mongol Empire, there were so many deaths that they reduced the Earth's population by 11%. Even in death, Khan was a ruthless killer. He died when he was 66 years old, but before he passed, he gave orders to make sure his grave would remain a secret. He ordered the caravan of his funeral to kill every single person they came across so that no one would ever know his final resting place. Number 3. Attila the Hun Branding himself as the Scourge of God, Attila the Hun was born in Hungary around 406. He became a feared name during the 5th century when he led the Hunnic Empire to devastate the lands of the Black Sea and several key areas of the late Roman Empire. When he and his brother first succeeded the rule of the Hunnic Empire, they offered a peace treaty with the Romans initially asking for 700 pounds of gold coins paid every year. But Attila claimed that the treaty was violated, and so he attacked various eastern Roman cities. Another treaty was made which caused the Romans to pay quadruple the amount of tribute just to keep the Huns at bay. Satisfied, Attila soon turned to gaining absolute independence, and so he brutally murdered his brother in order to become the sole ruler. Afterwards, he began attacking various Roman cities in the east and the west once again. One casualty was the city of Nasus. This place was so utterly destroyed, and there were so many corpses of citizens and soldiers that it clogged the Danube River for years to come. Attila's army instilled fear in their enemy because of their savagery and barbaric ways of war. They capitalized on this and caused many of the local tribes to join up with them often without even putting up a fight. Attila and the Huns were known to tie the severed heads of their enemies on their horses and saddles. As they went into war, they were often heard screaming and wailing, which terrified the opposing army, even before the battle had even begun. When they attacked cities, they weren't satisfied with simply overthrowing the leaders or forcing surrender, but instead they pillaged, raped, burned, and utterly destroyed everything in their path. Their goal was never to win over the cities, but to completely decimate them. In the end, Attila died mysteriously when he was found shortly after being newly married. Those who discovered him saw him bleeding despite having any wounds. It's believed he might have been poisoned and bled from the inside ultimately choking on his own blood. During his funeral, it's said that a river was diverted so he could be buried underneath a riverbed. However, no one knows exactly where this occurred, since afterwards, anyone that attended the funeral was killed. Number 2. 
Joseph Stalin. Born and raised in poverty, Joseph Stalin rose to prominence to become one of the most brutal tyrants the world has ever known. As he grew older, he found himself partial towards the idea of communism, being heavily influenced by Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. Over time, he joined the Bolshevik Party, headed by Vladimir Lenin. When the Bolsheviks gained control of Soviet Russia, Stalin served in various key positions within the government, making friends and steadily rising to prominence. After Lenin died in 1924, Stalin outmaneuvered his rivals, winning control and becoming the dictator of the Soviet Union. By the 1920s, under Stalin's reign, it was transformed into an industrial country. His regime focused in providing the government absolute control over everything, including a forced collectivization of the agriculture. Government would control and own the farmlands, and the farmers who refused to give up their lands were either shot and killed or sent to forced labor camps called gulags. As he rose in power, Stalin held the Soviet Union under a totalitarian grip. He would kill anyone who opposed him and expanded his secret police. People were encouraged to spy on one another and turn over those who were on suspicion of being against the government. By the 30s, this only grew worse as Stalin started his vicious campaign called the Purge, where he executed any person within the Communist Party or other sectors that he thought were secretly disloyal to him. During World War II, he created a non-aggressive pact with the Nazis, citing that the Soviet Union would not be attacked. However, Germany broke this treaty and attacked the country, killing thousands before they were eventually pushed back. In his later years, he grew paranoid and continued to persecute, terrorize, and kill his own people if he felt they were against him in any way. In 1949, he led the USSR into the nuclear age by detonating an atom bomb. He also gave permission to North Korean communist leader Kim Jong-il to attack South Korea because he was against the United States and any of their allies. This then brought on the Korean War. During his rule, it's estimated he killed more than 20 million people while taking in more than 800,000 prisoners. On March 5, 1953, Joseph Stalin died of a stroke at the age of 74. Number 1. Adolf Hitler Born on April 20, 1889 in a small Austrian town, Hitler initially had three siblings who all died during infancy. While growing up, he continuously had violent arguments with his father, who was a domineering and strong-willed figure in his life. Hitler's dream was to be an artist, but his dad disapproved and sent him to another school instead. But shortly after his father died, he dropped out and after leaving school headed to Vienna to find his own way. He applied at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts where he was rejected twice and told he would be better off as an architect. It was here that his views towards anti-Semitism grew as he was exposed to the ideas of Viennese mayor Karl Luger who hated Jews. Hitler was overly patriotic towards Germany and hated the diversity in Austria's Habsburg Empire. As a show of patriotism, when the war broke out in 1914, Hitler enlisted and despite bearing an Austrian citizenship, he was accepted into the army. He participated in several battles serving under France and Belgian forces before getting injured in the Battle of Somme. As a result, he was twice decorated with medals and honors. But his patriotism waned when Germany surrendered in the war, which to him was completely unacceptable. Furthermore, the Treaty of Versailles shifted the blame of the war on Germany alone. Seeing the result of the surrender as betrayal by the Jews and the socialists at home, Hitler decided he would try his hand in politics. He later joined the German Workers' Party, which would later become known as the Nazi Party. Using his gift for rhetoric and innate charisma, he easily won over many people and rose to the ranks of leader. Eventually, he ran in elections, espousing anti-Semitic ideas and nationalist views. For a brief time, Hitler was incarcerated for nine months after a failed coup attempt. However, apparently, even the judge thought he was a tremendous chap, 
and so he only served nine months out of his five-year prison sentence. It was here that he solidified his political and social stance, writing them into an autobiographical memoir called Mein Kampf, which sold millions during Hitler's run for office. By June of 1934, after steadily taking the Nazi party higher up in the government and seizing control of much of the military, Hitler finally reached the rank of Führer. Now he began putting his ideas into place and started segregation against the Jews and also expanding the Nazi territory. During his rule, Hitler performed some of the most heinous acts against humanity, more commonly known as the Holocaust, he prohibited sexual relations between the Aryan race and the Jews. This then expanded to gypsies, Negroes, or their bastard offspring. He then targeted children with disabilities and later on signed into order Action T4, which was a euthanasia program for adults with mental and physical disabilities. By 1942, he had decided that the Jews and other undesirable races should be executed. Mass genocides were then set up using Nazi concentration camps. It was the same year that the notorious Auschwitz concentration camp was established and eventually expanded with satellite branches to accommodate mass deportees for killing and slavery. Within the concentration camps, people were often killed inside gas chambers using poisonous insecticides. Some were starved to death, experimented on, or forced to participate in backbreaking labor with the promise of freedom after doing so. Aside from the concentration camps, the Nazis also wanted to enact the Hunger Plan, where they would reduce the population of their conquered territories through starvation. By the end of it all, it's believed Hitler and the Nazis killed more than 11 million people in total, 6 million of which were Jews. On April 30, 1945, at the age of 56, Hitler shot himself as enemy forces pushed in on Berlin. Those were the five most violent world leaders ever. Brutality knows no bounds. And just as these rulers have proven, it can be the most horrifying when leaders make no distinction between one human life and another. If you like this video, then remember to hit the notification bell. Every week we have new scary mysteries coming out for you to check out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.